Preparing the foundation for bridges underwater, while avoiding the challenges posed by water, is an incredibly complex task. It requires managing the immense pressure of ocean water and preparing a stable foundation, where even a minor mistake can lead to the collapse of the entire structure. To create a strong foundation, it is essential to work on the land beneath the water. This process begins with a geotechnical investigation to determine the conditions of the underwater soil. The primary goal is to reach the bedrock, which serves as a strong and reliable layer for building the foundation. This is a machine called the Cone Penetration Device. To begin the process, the device is sent to the ocean's surface. From the machine, a cone-shaped rod emerges, which is then penetrated into the surface layers of the seabed. This rod collects two types of data. First, it measures the amount of force required to penetrate the cone into the layers. As the cone reaches stronger layers, the machine needs to apply more force. Additionally, the sensor installed at the tip of the cone measures the friction encountered during penetration. When the cone reaches the bedrock layer, it encounters high friction and requires significantly more force. This data is used to create a graph, known as the resistance graph. High resistance on the graph indicates that the cone has reached the bedrock. At this point, engineers can determine the depth at which they need to dig to reach the bedrock and begin preparing the foundation. However, there is a challenge. The cone penetration test can only detect the bedrock layer directly beneath the test area. Since the bedrock layer beneath the ocean can vary in depth across different locations. To address this limitation, another popular test called the Seismic Reflection Survey is used. This system is installed directly on a boat. It works by emitting multiple sound waves into the water, and a hydrophone, installed on the other side, collects the reflected waves. The stronger the sound wave, the deeper it penetrates into the layers beneath the ocean floor. The hydrophones collect detailed information about the depth each wave reaches and time it takes to return. This data is then used to create a detailed map of the surface layers over a large area. To begin building the foundation, large ships and cranes are brought to the construction site. One of these vessels, which looks like a ship, is called a barge. The barge acts as a stable platform for workers above the water. To create a dry working area, a temporary dam called a coffer dam is constructed using long steel sheet piles. These piles need to penetrate deep into the bedrock, which requires applying high pressure. However, as force is applied, the steel piles often start bending due to their significant length. To address this issue, it is crucial to ensure the steel piles are perfectly straight before use. Additionally, instead of applying constant force, Using force through vibration can make the process more efficient. For this purpose, a vibratory pile driver machine is used. In this machine, two shafts rotate in opposite directions with weights attached to them. These rotating weights create vibrations and the frequency of vibration is controlled by adjusting the speed of the shafts. This technique allows the piles to penetrate the bedrock effectively without bending. As the steel sheet begins penetrating the surface and approaches the strong layer, the frequency of vibration is increased. This ensures that the steel sheet can reach deep into the bedrock effectively. In this manner, each sheet is driven into the bedrock one by one. To connect each sheet securely to the next, a tongue and groove interlocking mechanism is used. This ensures a tight and stable connection between the sheets. The interconnected sheets are arranged in a circular shape forming a structure known as a cofferdam. Once the cofferdam is constructed, water is pumped out using a pump. However, a new challenge arises. The interlocking mechanism of the steel sheets can lead to water leakage. Since it is crucial to stop all water entry to build the foundation, two mechanisms can be employed to address this issue. First, if the ocean surface level is less than 6 meters deep, the water pressure will be relatively low. In this case, the joints can be sealed using rubber gaskets or a bitumen coating, effectively stopping the leakage. After sealing, further construction can proceed. However, if the ocean surface level is deeper, say around 12 meters, the length of the steel sheets will increase, and the water pressure will be much higher. In such conditions, double safety measures are necessary to manage the high pressure. To address this, 
a double wall cofferdam is constructed. The outer wall is made of steel sheets, and an inner wall is also constructed using steel sheets. The space between the two walls is filled with soil and small stones. This filling not only stops water leakage, but also adds extra strength to the cofferdam, allowing it to withstand the high water pressure. With this design, water leakage is eliminated, and a strong foundation can be built. After constructing the cofferdam, the process of dewatering begins. However, as soon as all the water is removed, the entire cofferdam is at risk of collapsing. This happens because of the principle of Bernoulli, which states that liquid always flows from a region of high pressure to low pressure. Once the water inside the cofferdam is removed, a low pressure zone is created inside, while the high pressure ocean water outside exerts immense force, potentially causing the dam to collapse. To prevent this, a bracing system is installed to stabilize the steel sheet piles. Steel tie rods are used as lateral supports to handle the maximum lateral pressure exerted by the surrounding water. These tie rods ensure that the sheet piles remain secure even under high external pressure. With a bracing system in place, the dewatering process is carried out in a controlled manner, gradually reducing the water level while maintaining the structural integrity of the cofferdam. This ensures a safe and stable environment for the foundation work to continue. After dewatering, the foundation work can begin. However, once the dewatering process is complete, water may start leaking from beneath the steel sheet piles. This happens due to two primary reasons. The high pressure of the ocean water and the possibility that the steel sheet piles did not fully reach the bedrock. These gaps allow water to seep through. To address this issue, no separate treatment is required. Instead, the solution is integrated into the foundation work itself. By tackling this problem during the foundation process, both tasks are effectively managed simultaneously. To create the foundation, the first step involves removing the soil layer using a clamshell bucket excavator to reach the bedrock where the foundation will be built. However, the design of the foundation depends on its purpose. Whether it's for a road, railway, offshore wind turbine, or ocean lighthouse. If the foundation needs to bear a heavy load, it is reinforced to ensure greater strength. For this, hollow steel pipes are driven into the bedrock using a vibrator. The rock inside the pipe is then removed through drilling. Next, steel reinforcement bars are placed inside the pipes, which are subsequently filled with concrete. This process creates pile foundations that provide robust support for heavy structures. During this process, water continues to seep from beneath the steel sheet piles. To manage this, pumps are continuously operated to remove the water. For a permanent solution to water leakage, a concrete seal technique is used. However, pouring concrete directly into water is a challenge because the concrete can mix with the water and lose its integrity. To prevent this, the tremie method is employed. A long steel tremie pipe is used, with its bottom end sealed by a plug to prevent water from entering the pipe. The bottom of the pipe is positioned slightly above the bedrock, submerged in water. The top of the pipe has a hopper for filling concrete. Concrete is poured into the hopper and flows into the pipe. Once the pipe is completely filled, pressure builds up, forcing the plug out with a jerk. The dense concrete then spreads horizontally, displacing the water. This concrete mix is specially formulated with an anti-washout agent to prevent the cement particles from dispersing in water. As the concrete slab forms at the bottom, the tremi pipe is gradually raised, but the bottom end of the pipe must remain submerged in the concrete at all times to maintain a continuous flow. This ensures that water does not mix with the concrete, which would compromise the entire foundation. Maintaining a steady and uninterrupted flow of concrete is critical. Even a brief delay can allow water to mix with the concrete and ruin the foundation. Some of you might wonder how it's possible to pour concrete into water without it mixing. Let me explain this with a simple example. Imagine you have a jar filled with honey. If you pour the honey directly into a glass of water from the top, over time the honey will mix with the water due to direct contact. However, if you use a small pipe to take the honey to the bottom of the glass, similar to the Tremby method, only the outer layer of the honey will briefly touch the water. The rest of the honey remains unaffected as it flows to the bottom. 
In this way, the honey does not mix with the water, and you can keep pouring honey until a strong base is formed at the bottom. Now, replace the honey, in this example, with concrete, which is much denser than water. As the dense concrete spreads horizontally, it effectively displaces the water, creating a strong and stable foundation. This method successfully seals water without compromising the integrity of the concrete. To build a bridge, a foundation of reinforced steel bars is prepared. Since this foundation remains submerged in water, it is crucial to use durable and corrosion-resistant materials to ensure long-term strength and stability. Once the entire steel skeleton is ready, concrete is poured into it. Over the next 30 days, the concrete cures and hardens, creating a foundation strong enough to support the weight of a train or a road. After the foundation is complete, the cofferdam is removed. However, the steel pipes embedded in the concrete seal base cannot be fully removed, as doing so could compromise the stability of the foundation. Instead, these pipes are cut at the concrete seal level to ensure the foundation remains intact and secure. There are some limitations to the cofferdam technique. It cannot be, for deeper foundations, the pile foundation method is employed. In this method, large steel pipes are driven into the ocean bed using a vibratory driver machine. Once the pipes are in place, the water inside them is pumped out. Steel reinforced bars are inserted, and the pipes are filled with concrete, creating a strong and durable foundation. Another important method used for underwater construction is the Kaisen method. In this technique, a specially designed structure is built on land and then lowered into the water. Different types of Kaisens are available, each operating with unique technologies suited for various conditions. We will discuss these methods in detail in another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, your support means a lot to us. You can join us through channel membership to stay connected. Thank you for watching.